It was 1,574 days ago when England and New Zealand met in Northwest London at the iconic Lord Stadium in London in what was unquestionably the greatest World Cup final ever, or some might even argue the greatest ODI ever played. It was a match which ended in absolute elation for England and absolute despair for New Zealand. New Zealand didn't technically lose the match to England, but still walked away as runners-up of that World Cup due to a boundary count rule which the ICC has rightfully scrapped since then. Cut to 2023 in the present day, four years later, England and New Zealand meet again at the colossal Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad to kick off the ICC Cricket World Cup 2023. Now, will we see a match as exciting as the 2019 World Cup final? Well, if we do, we are in for a crackerjack of a game. Now, let's talk about England. Well, first and foremost, they have changed their captains with Oin Morgan retiring and Butler taking up his job. But not much has changed as most of their World Cup winning stars like Root, Wood, Chris Wokes, Moin Ali, Adil Rashid are still well and truly part of the side. The main worry for them though is the form of their senior pros Joe Root and Johnny Bairstow who haven't been able to make a lot of impact in recent times. They have also made a last minute change to their squad with Harry Brook replacing opener Jason Roy. They have arguably the most destructive batters coming in at number 4 or number 5 or number 5 or number 6 with Ben Stokes coming out of retirement for this ODI World Cup and captain Joss Butler slotting in at number 6. But that's not it. Post Joss Butler, we have the aggressive Liam Livingston coming in followed by Moin Ali, followed by Sam Curran and followed by Chris Wokes. Now you better get past that batting lineup because once these batters get in, no score is safe on any pitch in India. In the bowling department, they arguably have the fastest bowler in the world currently, Mark Wood, who is a handful on any pitch anywhere in the world. In the spin department, they have the veterans Moin Ali and Adil Rashid, who will fancy themselves in coming good in these testing conditions. They also have three left-arm pace options in Rhys Stopley, David Willey and Sam Curran, and an all-rounder, a genuine seam all-rounder in Chris Wokes. Their side is stuck with batting depth with Adil Rashid coming into bat at number 10 on most occasions. Thus, their middle order and their lower middle order have the option of going all out in any situation, which will hold them in very good stead on a flat pitch like Ahmedabad. Now, talking about New Zealand, they have a rather measured or cautious approach when it comes to batting, which is completely different than England. In Devon Conway, Daryl Mitchell, Mark Chapman, Rachin Ravindra, Glenn Phillips, Tom Latham, they have more than enough batters to take on England's bowling. However, it is in the bowling department that they have a slight edge over England, with Matt Henry and Trent Bolt, arguably two of the best swing bowlers in the world in their ranks. In the spin department, they have Is Sodi and Mitch Sadner, who have a rare attribute of turning up in challenging conditions. And to fall back on, they have the pace of Lockie Ferguson, who can be handful on any pitch. New Zealand will be without skipper Kane Williamson and Tim Saudi, who are both recovering from injuries. Now, how would New Zealand fill in the gap left by the absence of captain Kane Williamson in the top order? The inclusion of Rachin Ravindra at the top or by having G. Manisham at the bottom offer solutions. Having scored a 97 in the warm-up game, Rachin Ravindra could just get the nod ahead of Will Young while also offering a spin option. Joss Butler confirmed in the pre-match press conference that Ben Stokes is carrying a hip niggle and could potentially set out Thursday's clash. Should Ben Stokes not recover in time, Harry Brook will take his spot in the 11. If Harry Brook does play, it is quite some narrative shift after the disappointment of his initial squad omission in August. Speaking prior to training, Joss Butler also highlighted the potency of Gujarat Titan seam attack, which comprised of Mohit Sharma, Mohamed Shami and Joshua Little in their home conditions, which was also an early hint that four quicks could be the way to go which would probably mean Liam Livingston nudging out Moin Ali for the second spinner slot. Now, what to expect from the pitch at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad? Well, for starters, it will be a very sultry and warm day going by how the lead-up has been in Ahmedabad. The pitch is bound to have some dryness as a result and traditionally at this venue, there has been a tendency for some movement for the Pacers when the lights come on. The few key questions going into this match are can England's ultra-aggressive approach sustain on low and slow pitches in India? Do their batters have another gear if the situation demands so? And for New Zealand, can they rise beyond the tag of underdogs? Can they cope up without the likes of Kane Williamson and Tim Saudi? Will they be able to avenge the 2019 loss? Or will England again get over the line? 
we will find out the answer soon that's it for today's video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and leave a comment as lots of content is coming your way in the next two months